Let's ask the magic eight ball. Will Alex even do a decent tutorial this time? What is it gonna say? No. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> what a terrible. How's it going? It's Alex, once again. For those you, of you who have uh, recently purchased, in our case it was the Adventure Kit or a kit that has the OLED panel inside of it, I have a fun project for you guys, uh, kind of off, out of the blue, kind of random. It involves the following parts. The hero board, the USB cable to wire it to your computer, and the OLED screen, and that's it. It's actually fantastically simple, and I like it because of that. It's simply just, have you ever, if you ever found one of those, don't know if you have a legal rights to this, I think they're magic eight balls where you like shake it up and it's like, or like Spongebob magic conch. The magic conch, a club member. You know, I was getting, may I have something to eat? And it's like, no. Could I have anything to eat? No. Will Alex even do a decent tutorial today? No. That's what it told me. All, basically how it works is whenever it starts up, it gets a random sequence to generate and based on what it does decide to generate, if I reset it here, it will tell me, well, this time it told me no again. Thank you very much. But uh, if I were to ask it, like, can you say something other than no? It says maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so that's kind of fun little thing that I enjoy. Uh, I've had fun with it more than I should, to be honest with you. Um, but let me quickly explain to you guys all the code that goes into this. So, without further ado, if you have the library already installed from the Adventure Kit, then you should be fine. If you don't, you need to install the, the OLED library u8glib.h. To do that, we go to, um, obviously, if when you have the zip file, which I'll show you how to get in a sec, you go to sketch. Um, include library and you want to click add a zip library. Now the zip library, to get it, you go to inventure.io slash downloads or it might be linked below the video. And the chance that we forget, everything's always in the download section or in the inventure.io slash downloads. So if you go to downloads, there should be a link here. In our case, uh, as of today, the image looks like this. Um, it should bring you, clicking on here, to a Google Drive. And inside of the Google Drive, you'll find obviously everything that's necessary. So if I go to Adventure Kit Libraries, and then I click on the OLED 2 8glib hero.zip, which is obviously the one we're using because if you look here on the this thing you got here, we're using the u8glib.h. So downloading this and installing this zip file will get it so that all of your problems should hopefully go away if you don't have it installed. And then going down here, this is from the library. Don't worry about it. I could explain it to you. It's essentially just defining um, and it's what's necessary to define what the OLED display is here. Cause there's a dump, it, the library works for obviously a multitude of different types of displays. Um, this is just simply just finding the 128 by 64 specific one that we have. And that's library. I'm not gonna go through explaining that, but this line here, Obviously, you can just copy and paste it. It would work just fine for you. I have the temporary variable here, random magic eight ball, or I guess random eight ball. And uh, it's again, a temporary variable that I use later on in the code as I'm uh, going through and doing things. Um, here I have it defined as zero, but in the setup, again, code is pretty simple and this is why I like it. If you go to setup, you'll see that we have the color value. Here I'm setting the pixel to on. And I'm saying, perfect, let's obviously make sure the display will you know, have like a backlight and turn on white text and all this other stuff. It, essentially, it's just turning it on and allowing it to work. Then we have the random seed. And the reason I'm using random seed here is because, again, randomness in computing is not necessarily random. It's called pseudo-random for a reason, and that's because uh, it's not actually random whatsoever. Um, if I were to just do random, like let's just say I didn't have this code here, and I just said ra random eight ball is random eight. Every single time I hit the reset on here, it likely will just generate the same sequence of randomness. So you, if you hit reset, it only do like one of them because obviously each time it resets, it's going through the setup again. Um, so it wouldn't actually get anything random in it. In fact, I think if you didn't have it, last time I tried, it just said the last, very last one on case seven, which was honestly kind of a meme one. I know, um, you know, you have like maybe likely, and then obviously I put the little, Little one in there, just buy more inventory. <laughs> but uh, that's the only one it would only display if you didn't have a random seed, allowing it to generate a different random each time it started up. Which sounds confusing. But anyway, taking the random seed and then reading off of a random analog input, 
Uh, we'll get you a, hopefully close enough to randomness that you can possibly get. I do a delay of 30 milliseconds, and the reason I do that is just to give it a couple of seconds to process the random seed junk. And then I, t and then I say, okay, random eight ball, give me a random number between zero and seven. Essentially, when you put eight, and that's the only input you have, you're basically saying it's going to have eight different options, but again, it starts at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight is not actually an option. Then it goes to the loop and it just says, okay, while it has something to draw, which it should mostly always have one, it's just gonna hit the draw function. And the draw function is a little bit modified from the previous version of the code you saw if you did the uh, adventure kit. And that's simply saying void draw we're going to set the font to just a standard Unicode font that it uses all the time for the default for library. Not really that important there. Obviously you need it, but it's not like game changing. We're going to have a switch, but it's going to say, okay, cool. So if magic random eight ball decided on this time it restarted to become a two, then it would go to case two and it would say, okay, let's draw the string and let's say, I'm not sure. And this is basically how it just generates a random one in print of the screen. And so with that, uh, assuming all that is obviously set up, if I go to, once again, uh, let's see, tools, make sure the port and everything is set up, and then I hit upload and upload this code, it will upload uh, and give me a, obviously, random one on its initial startup. But, uh, so if I ask it the question, um, was this tutorial any good whatsoever, it will let me know once it's done compiling and uploading. And I was hoping it would. Oh, uploading, perfect. Was it any good? Let's see. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Buy more adventure. What a beautiful answer. That's it, I'm out. Thank you very much.